This video is meant to be a supplement for the Houdini courses offered at Becker College and Lesley University. In this video, we're going to discuss the other way of, of creating glue networks for objects, and that is using the RBD glued objects button here in the rigid body shelf. And a couple of things we need to be aware of with using this particular button is that we need to have an object that's fractured. Uh, so if I double click on my torus geometry that I have here, you'll see that I just have a, a fairly standard surface scatter uh, piped into a Volnoi fracture. And this is not a simulated object yet. Uh, if we want to use the RBD glued object button, we also uh, need to make sure that our object has not been simulated yet. So it can't already be part of a simulation. So <clears throat> here at the object level with the geometry node selected, I'm going to click on the RBD glued objects button. And since I didn't have any simulation, it generated a new auto dop network. If I hit the L key, we can see that there's my RBD object coming in and there's my glue constraints and my glue constraint relationship. I'm going to go ahead and also add a ground plane in. So I'm going to go to the collision shelf and add a ground plane. And now we have our torus object, the auto dop network, and also the ground plane. So if I run the simulation, the object will come apart a little bit. It really, it depends on how much force the object hits another object, in this case, the ground plane, and uh, you know how much it will break. And that's dependent on the glue strength. So if I go into the auto dop network, we can find that glue strength here in the glue constraint relationship node. So if I select that, my strength is set to 10,000. And if I start to lower that to maybe something like 100, I should see the object break apart more when it hits the ground. And it actually was the glue constraints were so weak, they didn't hold it together at all. So if I set that strength at a really high value, I'm setting it to 100,000 and now it stays together. So uh, just to summarize here, the difference between our RBD glued object and our glue adjacent is that the RBD glued objects button, shelf tool or shelf button, is used on a fractured object or an object that has not been simulated yet. Whereas the glue adjacent is used to hold two RBD objects together that have already been simulated. Now, where we find the, the glue constraints that were generated when we use the RBD glued objects, that can be found up here at the object level. Unlike the glue adjacent that creates a, a, an additional geometry node where the glue constraints are created, the RBD glued objects button will generate the glue constraints inside the fractured object itself. So if I double click on it and come in here, we can see that Houdini has added the glue constraint off of the rest node, but before the assemble and the dop import. And right there are the glue constraints. If I click on that, it's the connect adjacent pieces. We can see the glue network. We can kind of think of them as, as rubber bands in a way uh, that can snap if the strength is, is uh, low enough. Um, now, you just want to make sure if you come in here and work with any of these nodes that you bring your display flag back to the dop import. Otherwise, the simulation won't play because this is what's bringing the information back over from the DOP network. So if our display flag is anywhere else, even over here on the constraint or um, yes, the glue network, uh, it won't simulate. So we need to make sure that our flag is back over here and then the simulation should run properly. Uh, now, just like I had demonstrated in the glue adjacent video, if we want to break this apart at a certain point, point in time, we can do that in a pretty straightforward manner by just coming into the auto dop network and in the glue constraint relationship node, we can animate the activation on and off over time and then have the glue constraint break and fall apart at a certain point in time. 